This University of Nebraska report says expanding livestock could bring hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, to the state of Nebraska. But it also means building more feedlots, dairy farms, and hog barns that some simply don't want in their neighborhoods. I looked west and uh, we found a lot of opportunity in Nebraska. Training the hills of Virginia for the wide open countryside of Nebraska. Steve Wolf was drawn to a state whose potential for livestock may be unparalleled. Nebraska has a lot of advantages over a lot of other states and water is clearly the number one advantage and uh, you know any kind of livestock industry there's a lot of opportunity in Nebraska. 17 years after Wolf Den Dairy set up near Kearney, you won't find many others who have followed. Since then, you know, things have changed a little bit and, and a lot of it is the local zone. You just got a whole lot more people out there that you got to persuade that, uh, you know, you're doing the right thing. Many enjoy meat, eggs and cheese, but what smells like money to some stinks to others. Can't send your kids outside to play. You can't have your windows open at night. We were here first. It's definitely nothing to put next to a town. That was the reaction some had seven years ago for a cattle proposal near Ravenna. Unfortunately, they you know they hear the bad stuff, and you know there's a lot of good stuff out there, and that's what uh, you know the livestock industry has not particularly done a great job in the past on educating you know the public on, on what we're doing. And livestock producers can invest in high-tech systems to protect the air and water and have all the permits, but if they don't convince their neighbors, that planning could be for nothing. It's not just the regulatory requirements and the environmental protections that go with that decision. It's the policy uncertainty of how much can I invest in planning such an activity when I don't know for certain the, uh, the, the process involved. That uncertainty is built into the law. In Nebraska, we operate under local control and zoning control in the state. So it's the local governing authority's decision to make to, to allow in uh, new livestock operations. Some producers who may want to expand don't, not wanting to fight that battle. Be denied by a county board or something, uh, it, it gets discouraging and it makes it so that other individuals don't want to go and invest that effort. Dairy farms are expanding in South Dakota and Minnesota, states that may be more welcoming than Nebraska. That's a possibility. That's why we just have to stay on the positive side and just show those those operators that are looking to move the, you know, the advantages of Nebraska, the feed, the water, and the quality of life. In Iowa, there's no local zoning of agriculture. Decisions are made at the state level. Nebraska values local input, but there are so-called livestock-friendly counties. It's not an honorary title, but a way to designate counties that are open to expansion, removing some fear of the unknown. We don't have any rules on the books that explicitly state that this process uh, leads to certain approval. Steve Wolf says livestock-friendly counties are a great start, but he wants to build on that, working with counties and the state to attract more farmers like this where it makes sense. We still have the same opportunity here in Nebraska. We just kind of need to get on board. And, uh, you know, a lot of it starts with educating, educating the public and uh, our consumers, or, you know, what we're doing and, and just educating them about uh, large livestock confinements. So just how big is the potential right here in Nebraska? We'll talk to the experts and hear what they say Thursday night.